Why'd you talk already? I forgot that I'm not allowed to talk. <laughs> Hi. Um, my name is Mia Martinez. I'm a senior, and this is my final presentation video for Genius Hour 2022. And my last, because I'm graduating in two months. <laughs> Our teacher Ben gave us 20 weeks to plan, create, and present our own passion projects of anything we wanted. Something amazing is that each and every student has something different from each other that they chose that reflects the things they're interested in and what skills they want to expand and who they are as a person. And I think this project is so important for teenagers as they figure out what they want to do as future careers or what they just might like to enjoy and have fun with. So for my Genius Hour project, as you may know if you watched my pitch way back in November, is that I wanted to make a four part acrylic painting of the four seasons of the year. And each painting has a different pet that has sadly passed away, um, most of them within the past year or so. Um, those pets being Holly, Ray, Biscuit, and Duncan. And the first bare minimum goal I set to achieve was, did I finish it? And the answer is yes. I present to you the first seasons. So right off the bat, I've already done more for this year's project than my Genius Hour project last year, which was me trying to learn how to cook. I think the main thing that helped with that was the fact that I did this project entirely within the art studio at school, sometimes for two or three periods a day. Whereas last year's project, I was supposed to try at home, and by the time I'm already done with school for the day, I'm kind of basically tired and I want to go to bed. Also, I forgot to mention, I moved last year, around the same time. Um, so that was, that was kind of my bis biggest obstacle last year. I can't speak. I'd like to tell you all now the main obstacle I'm facing with making this final presentation video as a warning to all of you guys if you're doing Genius Hour next year. Film all of the process! As I've been going back trying to find things to share with you all about what I've worked on these past few months, I came to the horrific realization that I hardly have any videos to show you. I think I might have been like too anxious to film some things, like filming myself in public or filming other people's reactions to my paintings. My lack of confidence is unfortunately gonna make this kind of lackluster, I guess. And this sucks as a video editor that wants to make the smoothest, cleanest, final presentation video possible. I have a lot of progress photos I can share with you guys throughout this video, but like I said, I didn't film enough. But you know, I got next year, right? Ha. Get it, because I'm graduating in two months. <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Anyways, I already have a feeling that I'm getting too sidetracked, and I don't want this video to be too long, so I guess I'll just time travel a few months back for you guys. November 17th, 2021. This is probably the point where I was the most excited and ambitious about this project, which is right before I even sketched my first line or painted my first stroke. A bad habit of mine is that I can get really excited about an idea, um, but once I really start the thing, my interest has a very fast and sharp decline, and the next thing you know, I've already forgotten about the whole thing. It feels very rare to me when I actually have an idea and go through with it and make something that I'm proud of. I have this sort of confidence that can be easily broken, and it makes me anxious about trying to do anything I enjoy, like, all the time. I knew though that I couldn't let this get in the way for Genius Hour, and that's just because this thing is going to count for like most of my grade. These paintings represent this sort of um, grief I wanted to let go of, and it was something I wanted to, to create for my family, as most of the pets were theirs too. Specifically, my brother, since Ray was his childhood dog, and his best friend, if you will. My wounds regarding my furry friends were still fairly fresh when I first began this project. And that kind of sounds like poetry, but like, I didn't mean for that to be poetry. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna move on to these few clips that I have from the first day I actually started sketching some things, which was November 30th, 2021. I'm much more used to making art on a smaller scale, so sketching it out took about a week since I wasn't used to working with so much space before. Once I was done with that though, I painted each canvas one by one starting with Duncan's. I worked from right to left since I'm left-handed, and I don't know if that's weird or not, that's, that's probably weird. I'm not sure what to say from here, as I feel like you probably don't want to hear the explicit details about every drop of paint that was put onto the canvas. 
I can say though, I was not completely proud of myself throughout the whole process. Just like I feel like I have with everything in my life, I had these ups and downs emotionally about if what I was doing was good enough. I compare myself to others far too often, and I also get in my head a lot. Sometimes I thought the paintings were coming along nicely and I was proud of what I had accomplished, but then out of nowhere I'd just start feeling terrible about everything I was doing. I just felt worthless, that I was wasting my time, and maybe I should quit. I didn't film any of my breakdowns, although that would have made for some excellent emotional content. But I could tell you that it was pretty ugly. And the only thing I could keep doing is pushing myself forward and remind myself about how excited I was when beginning this project. And that's exactly what I did. In my original long-term planner, I had said that all four paintings would be done by approximately March 5th. I finished on February 8th. That's almost a whole month early. I pushed myself so hard that I finished way too early, <laughs> which I don't know if that's something I should be proud of or concerned about. JJ was one of the main people that helped me stay motivated about finishing and she got to see all of my ups and downs during the process, which I'm sure was entertaining for her. I'm also really glad she liked the finished project because as a school's art teacher, her opinion obviously means a lot to me. I also wish I got to film Ben's reaction to seeing the finished product since he also really liked it and that was probably one of my favorite moments of the whole Genius Hour process. So you think this is where it ends, right? Nope! Conveniently enough, I had finished just right on time so I could submit my work into the Pocono Arts Council art show. Now I had never submitted anything into an art show before because like I said before I'm not very confident in what I do, but for someone who's loved art since she could hold a pencil, that's pretty sad. As a kid, I never wanted to participate in any of that kind of stuff, despite my dad trying his best to motivate me, and looking back, I kind of really regret it. Now, this leads us up into the most emotional, painful, stressful part of this Genius Hour project for me. February 19th, 2022. The Pocono Arts Council Art Show. Now, don't get me wrong, I was actually really excited about this. I was basically counting down the days leading up to this thing. But something I should have remembered is that I had never been to an art show before, and I had no idea what it was like. But this was really important to me, so much so that I invited Evan, my dad, my grandparents, and my brother all to this art show. And most of them were going to see these paintings for the very first time. I had it all envisioned in my head how it was going to go, and I was really nervous but also really excited. As we arrived though, this tiny little building this show was held in was so packed with people that if it weren't for me bringing my 6'3 boyfriend, um, I probably would have been stepped on a few times. As I walked through the show, I saw all my other fellow Evergreeners works, like Anna's Whale in the front window, that one best in show by the way, um, Levi's drawing, Thomas's tree sculpture, uh, etc. And I saw all their little ribbons and awards attached to their works. Then I slowly walked up to mine and I had nothing. Better yet, they even hung up the paintings wrong. It was my worst nightmare. I was the only person from the school that answered that didn't win anything. Now, I know I sound selfish probably, and I sound like the biggest sore loser ever, but like I said earlier in the video, my confidence is very easily broken. I'm a very fragile person. I was proud of my friends and their accomplishments, don't get me wrong, but deep down, I was also very hurt. My other family members eventually showed up and they gave their quick reaction, which I'll insert here. <laughs> it's all the pets. And they just kind of stood around, didn't even look at any of the other paintings, and left as fast as they could. Evan and I stayed there for basically the whole time until it was over and we talked to JJ for a while and they eventually let us rearrange the paintings how they're supposed to be, although they wouldn't stay up properly, obviously. I had a bit of a panic attack in the car after that um, and there was just so many thoughts running through my head. Like did I fail? Was that it? At least I always have next year, right? <laughs> that doesn't get old, does it? I had this kind of bruised ego for a week or so after that. Heck, it even still kind of hurts now. It's like everything I put into this passion project of mine, every hour I spent, every paint stroke I made on those canvases, it was all for nothing. All because one judge 
thought it wasn't good enough. But there's something I forgot within the moment that I need to remind myself of now. That judge doesn't know who I am. They never will. They didn't know the meaning behind that painting. They aren't my family members who spent the last decade or so loving and living with most of those pets on the painting. They aren't the love of my life who know how hard I've worked on this and how hard it is for me to do something like this. They are my art teacher who helped throughout the whole painting process and got to see the whole thing unfold. They are my friends who have known me for forever and support me through everything. And they are my English teacher who assigned me this project and know how much I struggled to get this far. I don't need to seek validation from anyone really, but if I do, I need it to be from the people I love most in my life, not a stranger. And I have to start trying not to let that lack of validation hurt me as much as it wants to. I didn't know that a month ago though, so after this art show, what was I supposed to do now? I surely wasn't going to spend the rest of my genius hour periods in school doing nothing, so I decided to start a little side project. I knew my brother was going to want to keep the painting of Ray, but I didn't want the canvases to be separated from each other, so I decided I was going to make him a completely different painting of Ray. And I did. It actually only took me a little bit over a week. Um, which for myself I guess is kind of impressive, it's pretty fast for me. Um, but I do like how this one turned out a lot actually, and maybe even more than the first season's painting, but I'm not sure. I won't know, and I suppose only time will tell with that. I haven't been able to give it to him in person yet, um, since I wanted to hang it up in the Genius Hour Expo Hall um, alongside my other work, but I really do hope he likes it. Now, you may be thinking now that I've shown you how I finished my Genius Hour project basically twice, that that has to be it now. Well, nope again. <laughs> There's no more paintings, but I just have some things I want to touch on and then I'll say my concluding statements. So, um, I actually think that a lot of you may think that once you graduate, you're never gonna have to deal with Genius Hour projects ever again. And for some of you, that might be sad and for others, you're probably eternally grateful that you're never gonna have to make another update ever again. <laughs> By the way, I think I forgot to mention that I never made like a single update, like the whole time, like I was supposed to. I just couldn't ever get myself to do it for some reason. I didn't really like the whole update thing. Well, hopefully that doesn't dramatically drop my grade. Ben, please don't drop my grade. <laughs> okay, back to what I was saying. I think something that people don't actually realize is that Genius Hour doesn't end once you graduate. It might have not even started when Ben first assigned it to us for some people. It's something you do your whole life. You find something you've always wanted to do, or something you want to improve and work on, and you go through all the trial and error and see what you come up with. It's something that, with the right motivation, we'll be doing constantly for our whole lives. So I encourage everyone, especially my class that's about to graduate, to find their own genius hour project to do over the summer. Or just whenever. You never know where it might lead you. As for me, I still have a lot of learning to do, obviously. I'm still in the midst of trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do in college, and I believe this project has pushed me more towards wanting to become an art major. It might not work out, but honestly, who knows? But thanks to this fun little experiment, I actually have a better understanding of what I might want to do for the rest of my life, and that's pretty cool. So. Thank you to Evan, my family, my friends, my fellow Evergreeners, JJ and Ben. You guys are the ones that keep me from falling out of passion and keep me wanting to do what I love to do. Thanks. <laughs>